is up, guys? Welcome to the Meaning of Podcast. I am Andres. This is RB3. And this is the podcast where we talk about the deeper meaning within your favorite movies. And this episode, we're doing something different. We're doing a TV show, RB3. Yeah. Uh, a recent, and not super recent, I believe it came out a few weeks ago, yeah. but a recent-ish show that came out on Amazon and had the people talking online. That is a Amazon original called The Boys, RB3. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this is... I believe produced by Eric Kripke, who did uh, one of my all-time favorite shows, RB3, which is Supernatural. Mm. Um, he is the showrunner and the creator of Supernatural, and I believe he's one of the co-creators of this show, as well as uh, uh, Rogan. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Seth Evan Rogen Goldberg. and his Evan Goldberg. That's his yeah, name. Yeah, I didn't know that until literally looking up like five minutes ago. Yeah. I never watched the so, credits. So those are the three guys who kind of overlooked this show, especially Eric Kripke. I feel like he had a bigger hand than, yeah, than Rogan yeah, 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 uh, and Goldberg. Even though yeah, Go that's probably name Rogan and Goldberg did um, Future Man on Hulu. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that one with Josh Hutcherson. It's very similar as far as like a kind of like R-rated, over-the-top, like Mm. sci-fi show. Yeah. Um, I actually really like Future Man. (laughs) But this is not about Future Man. It's It's about the boys. Uh, Season one is, I believe, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, But a lot of people didn't care for it. Uh, It's also very over-the-top and insane, but but I I dug it. So that's just me. But either way, the point of this show is supposed – it's based on a comics but yeah. it's supposed to be a satirical version of the Justice League. Yeah. What of the what if the Justice League existed in this world, a world that's very um, morally corrupted. Morally corrupted, but what what's the there's a word for 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 being uh, ambiguous. Pe- no, very um Pessim- C- it's oh, a very cynical. Pessim- cynical. That's the yeah, damn word. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, RB3. It's a very cynical yeah, way of 100%. view of the superhero world, and it's 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 very much a response to the MCU, to Captain America, to the aspirational version of these superheroes. And it's saying no. If we had superheroes, they'd be corrupted, they'd be corp- corporatized, and they would, you know, do bad things for the government. Uh, and that's kind of all the things that come together within this TV show is that that's the first thing we see when they come together. Um, besides that, RB3, I, I want to get your general thoughts on this show. You finally finished it. I saw it when it first came out over the weekend. I yeah. bitched the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really give my thoughts because I feel like there's just so much to dive into that I feel it's a little bit unfair for me to just tweet it out and have everyone go at me. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> and mean, there's a rapid fan base it, for this show, right? It, there is a very rapid fan base, and I'm sure I'm going to hear all of them. I'm sure the fan base has nothing to do with the title of the show, Ooh. right? The boys. Yeah, boys. maybe. But either way, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts, RB3. Uh, yeah. Just general thoughts, and then we'll get obviously deeper throughout the episode. Yeah, I mean, it was cool, you know what I mean? It wasn't like the... I don't think it uh, a lot of hype a lot of hype for it was 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 a little high. Um and when I was on set doing timestamp, literally Brian Perez was talking about it. My boy Riley, who was like the BTS photographer. He but you was said Brian it. thought it was okay though. Yeah, right? Brian thought it was okay. But I mean literally everybody was seemingly talking about this show and I you know, I hadn't seen it. Uh, you got told me about it too, like right after you watched it. Yeah. Um Using your, then, your account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And which was funny, <laughs> which was so funny because I clicked on the shit and then it was like, watch episode eight. I was like, what? I, I haven't watched this show. And I thought, oh, I was eight. Was but eight. I literally clicked, I clicked episode eight thinking that was the first episode. Mm. So I literally watched 30 minutes of episode eight what? without even realizing no. that, like, <laughs> that wasn't even My the first bad, episode. Dude. No, no, it's not your bad. It actually was kind of funny because yeah. it kind of gave me the foresight of what True. was going to happen for some of the stuff. Now, some of the stuff, some of the stuff in the beginning was like really predictable, mm. um, even without even with or without knowing the information that I, it was revealed to me in seeing the, first, the last episode first. Um, a lot of the stuff was pretty predictable. Like I almost as soon as you know the the A train dude runs through mm-hmm. the girlfriend, I'm like, oh, that's the central plot of the show. Like because at, at, to that point, like it wasn't really clear, you know. Mm. And I feel like a lot of the episodes is not really like a point per se. It just kind of treads along until like, you know, it kind of is more. The show's more interested in what world building. I felt like this season than it was to actually telling like the story. You know. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's I I like the metaphors it was going for. I like the corporatized you know idea of the superhero. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of subject matter and material that like you know kind of. Uh, goes alongside with that, you know, like the Incredibles, uh, like a, a big comparison that 
the show's gotten is is Watchmen. Um, you know, at least that's what Brian when. We're it's first talking. Such a stretch, but okay, yeah. Well, you, do you not see the Watchmen influence? Oh, hundred percent. But yeah. but it's a, com, tone wise, it's well, tone wise, yeah. But what they're not saying, at all. S- the same cynical sure. nature. Sure, sure. And I, I mean, I'd almost kind of say tone tonically, they're pretty, they're pretty much in the same line, uh, because Watchmen is uh, a very heavily satirical thing. The difference between Watchmen, but and, it's not belly laugh. Like, no, because this is trying to go for comedy. Now this is trying to go for comedy. Yeah. Whereas Watchmen is satire. That's like be. It's dramatic on purpose. Sure. You know, the movie is and the, the comic book is like the the comic book and the movie are both overly dramatic to emphasize how a lot of these storylines during that time period took these fucking superheroes like over overly dramatics in them themselves. I mean, Alan Moore was the dude who, Alan Moore and um, who's the other dude? Frank uh, Miller. Yeah, Frank, uh, Frank Miller with a dudes who like made Batman like a fucking killer. You know what I mean in the eighties. So like that's what that's what Watchmen represented, and that's what this show kind of represents. But this show is trying to is going for the punchline, whereas Watchmen was displaying the punchline by its tone and this you know everything. Um, whereas I feel like Watchmen, the problem with the movie Watchmen is that the whole anti violence message of the source material is kind of watered down because. Zack Snyder is a 12-year-old kid who loves violence. Um, this this show doesn't really have, like, a real moral compass. So it's kind of hard to, like, tell, like, do they actually appreciate the... the source material? Oh, yeah, I, I don't even know about source material. Do they actually... What are they trying to say about the violence of the superheroes? You know, it's, it's clear that they're supposed to be the bad guys of the series. But what's not clear to me is, like, where the show kind of stands on, like, the actual violence and the actual you know what I mean like it doesn't really say much outside I guess this is what I'm trying to say I guess to me I don't connect to this show as much because I don't know what it's trying to say outside of being a joke like that's just really that's just at the end of the day what, what it comes down to like you didn't so. you didn't feel like the the message was clear enough but it's just to me it's like it's a lot of themes it's a lot of th- it's, it's a lot of big themes a lot of big concepts a lot of big like political stuff, a lot of big religious stuff that they deal with. But then at the end of the day, I feel like it doesn't really, it's less interest. It it does those things. It does the themes really well and has a big idea about themes, but the story is just like as generic as any other superhero, or I guess in this case, supervillain storyline. Hmm. So it, do, it doesn't really elevate, you know what I mean? Whereas to me, Watchmen, the story and the tone work hand in hand. You know, the, the evolution of Dr. Manhattan, uh, going from this Jesus figure to being ultimately the one who um, takes the fallout for the end of the world, um, it matches consistently with the tone and the theme and the story. Whereas this whereas this show has a tone that's like a slapstick comedy, has a theme that's like super dramatic that's about war and um, privatization of war and all of these like big heavy concepts. And then it has the story of Deadpool. <laughs> it doesn't really have like it, it doesn't really have a, a full you know thing going for it. So. so you felt like it was all like kind of all over the place and trying to be mixed in together. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. It was kind yeah, of yeah, not as clear as it should have been. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't think I think the show's a lot. The show thinks it's a lot smarter than it actually is. Interesting. So I don't have a problem with it. I mean, honestly, again, like we talked about last week and previous weeks. Um, I'm all for something that's different in the marketplace. You know, mm-hmm. it's good that we have something different. It's another superhero show, so it's really not that different. Um, but at least it's a differentiation from the Marvel shit and the mainstream. Super- now the new DC shit that's basically the Marvel shit. But as in terms of the boys itself, I don't think it's really, like, all that special. It's good, but it's not, like, the greatest thing ever. Interesting. So, so after all that, you say it's it's good. But, but not that special. No, I mean, it's good. See, that's the thing. Like, for me, like, if something, to me, it's like potential. T- potential is the thing I look at the mm, most days. Like, yeah. the show had a lot, a lot of potential. It's a lot of buildup. It's it, a lot it of buildup. And, 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 and it had the great, it had a great setup, great premise, great themes they're addressing. But if it just wasn't this, like, paper thin story, then I would have probably thought it was a lot cooler than it actually would be, mm. you know? Um, but, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. No, no. I, I, I had a lot of hot thoughts, a lot of hot takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to say, like I said, I didn't want to tweet it out just because I was like, uh. 
Yeah. There's just too much here for me to just simply say it on, on Twitter and then have a Twitter fight about it. Right. Um, I thought it was okay. I thought the show was, I, I think the hype killed it for me. Um, I, I think that's part of it just because I, I saw it, I feel, the weekend after. Mm -hmm. I think I said I saw it the weekend of, but I'm wrong. I saw it the weekend after. Mm -hmm. So the hype was just like, the boys is the best show ever. Like I literally saw best show ever, best superhero show ever, the greatest thing on TV. The great. Those were headlines from like articles. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, damn. No. This show must be amazing. Right. I think the hype killed it, man. I, I think I was just going in with such high expectations that the first episode, I was like, oh, mm, that was all right. <laughs> yeah. I, the first I, episode I, had me hooked. But really? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I felt like I didn't like the goofy tone uh, yeah. as for, at first. I was yeah. just like, I like this goofy tone. And then I was just like, I don't like this goofy tone. There's just so much like, like the girlfriend exploding in slapsticky way and then yeah. everything. And I was like... Oh, that's that's oh, that's intense, yo. That's wild. And then it's like the way he reacts. It's like, oh no, and he like does this, and his face is all covered in blood. And I was like, oh, I don't think I liked his reaction. Yeah. No offense to Jack Quaid, I actually think he's great in this show. Mm. Um, but I I think it had it took a couple episodes for me to get into it. Um, like you said, RB three, the world building. There are superheroes. They would be a part of a superhero agency. There would be an actual company. That, that is responsible for them, that, yeah. that, it, that directs what they do, that directs, make sure that they don't step over the line over the government, that predicts crimes, like all that kind of stuff is stuff that's great because I know that stuff. You know where I see that? My Hero Academia does that exact same thing. But My Hero Academia is in a much more positive light because they're saying let, we're, we're corporatizing superheroes and we put them in agencies. But there's different agencies that you can pick. There's competition. And I kind of wanted to see that and not just a malop. What's it called? Bot? Monopoly. Yeah. Bot? bot. Not very, very clear metaphor for a bot, you know, bot, yeah. bot, whatever. Um, but but there's in, in My Hero Academia, there's yeah. different agencies yeah. that, that, that kind of sponsor heroes and get them advertisements and all this kind of stuff. And it's super fascinating, like how they work with the government, what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do. Right. That to me is more interesting than just a monopoly. But they wanted to do the very pessimistic, cynical version, right. which is fine. They right. want to do that. Um, and Incredibles again, too addre address that, too. That's Incredibles true. Too and, and, that. and it's also one of those things where it's... Um, I'm very familiar with Justice League. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm very familiar with the comics and, and the characters of Justice League, so I can right. see how it's a parody and a satire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm cool with that. It's the idea of, like, if if Superman was real mm -hmm. and he decided to be evil and he mm -hmm. decided to do whatever the hell he wants, there's literally no stopping him. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't do shit. <laughs> yeah. Superman is so OP, and he really yeah. is, like, OP. That yeah. it's like, yo, that's scary. And it really is scary. Uh, Homelander is terrified in the last few episodes because you're like, oh, crap. Yeah. This guy's a psycho and he can pop the planet like a zit if he wants. Yeah. Um, but so I, I like those things. But I just really felt like there were so many moments that were just, we're edgy to be edgy. And we're, yeah, yeah was, cool, yeah, middle fingers, yeah. F word. I said the C word. What? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I, I felt so much of it just, just being goofy and, and, and dick jokes just to have goofiness and dick jokes. And yeah. that kind of took me out of the, the seriousness of it that they wanted to yeah. to get into. No, nah, yeah, I agree. I, I think that's why, yeah, it, yeah, I think I agree. It was it was edgy for the edgy, for the sake of being edgy. Whereas I feel like Watchmen also is edgy for the sake of being edgy. Yeah. But it's consistent, you know, like, they, they, ed, like Watchmen never turns it off, you know, yeah. like, I, for me at least I mean again maybe this is me loving Zack Snyder's movie too much but I think for me it's, it's ed, like it's consistently dark and gritty and um, goes non-stop and like how ridiculous it is you know True. whereas I think this show it kind of like teeters back and forth it's like oh we want to give you a real human moment but then we got to go back to the um, bullshit like you know s stuff or whatever you know um, I did think I did think some of the stuff I, th I thought some of the side plots were really funny. I love the whole uh, thing with A Train and, and his girlfriend Popclaw. I thought that whole shit was hilarious. How like they're addicted to the to the juice. Like he's he's the athletic. He's like the Flash version of this. So he's like the athlete. And he has to run on TV, but he got to like stay juiced up to stay on top. I thought that shit was really funny. Uh, and I also thought uh, I thought um, the whole dynamic between. Um, um, Star, what's what's her name? Star, 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 Starlight, Starlight. Yeah, I thought Starlight um, and I, 
Mm. I think Starlight and and Huey had like a kind of interesting thing. I just really liked her episode, like that whole episode when they went to like the the Christian Bible retreat thing. Interesting. So, we'll, we'll get to that because I have yeah. a lot of thoughts on that too. Yeah. Um, yeah let, but the rest of the characters, I feel like they didn't give anything to. Yeah. Oh, but Mo- do you like Mother's Milk? I mean, I don't know anything about the guy other sure. than like he has a family, but yeah. he's a cool character. Yeah, Lance. Uh, you know Lance who I liked? Him. I like Frenchie. Frenchie was cool. Frenchie, yeah, Fr- yeah. Frenchie to me brought the obviously the serious side of it. Maybe that's kind of why I liked him. Yeah, just because yeah. he was much more dramatic than the other actors. But I like Frenchie and the girl. I guess I like Carl what... Urban too. I like Carl Urban. Carl Urban's great, yeah. but you know, you know what kind of took me out a little bit too. But yeah. I guess the point of it was to take me out, and I've I've had this discussion before, and a lot of people kind of countered me by saying that's the point yeah. but what took me out was the fact that we're following these this crew right and i'm trying to figure out what they are mm. and at first you're like oh they're a side project of the government oh no they're not they're just uh vigilantes and i'm like cool they're vigilantes mm. but then the the whole scene with what's the guy's invisible man's name uh, um, uh i know what you're talking about yeah um i forget his name um it, he's got an awesome name. I can't believe I forgot it. The uh, translucent. Translucent. Yeah. Um, the whole time during those scenes, I was trying to. Re- I was like, really trying to wrap my. I was. I was Huey in that moment where he's like, "What are we doing? What's going on? Uh, we're we're trying to kill him. Why, why are we trying to? I'm confused. Why are we trying to kill this guy? Mm-hmm. Like he didn't do anything. He didn't kill my girlfriend. Like I, I was very much on Team Huey when it's like, "Fuck A Train. I want A Train to die." And I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck A Train. I want him to die." But when it came to, I was so confused with Translucent. I was like, why are we trying to kill him yeah. again? Well, it makes, it makes, and, and they were it like, oh, because he'll tell face. everyone. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, sure, okay, I get it. But I was really like, I was a Huey in that moment where I was like, why are we killing this random superhero who's literally, we find out in later episodes, not a bad guy. Like, he's a creepy dude, but he's got yeah, a son. He's fucking creepy. Yeah. yeah, he's super creepy, but he's got a son. <laughs> and it's like, he's just a weirdo. Like, yeah. why are we trying to explode him and kill him and why is it cool yeah. like that kind of really took me out when it's like <laughs> are we just killing yeah. superheroes because it's fun and they explode whoa yeah, and yeah. Up. yeah I, I, like, I really didn't I, like that that took I me out like, man i, didn't like I was that like episode too. I didn't like yeah that, that episode really i was like you guys are just as bad yeah. as the why why I, why would i root for you like yeah. you give me no reason and then carl urban's character kind of pushed pushed the envelope even more to the point where i was shocked that Starlight would even consider help yeah, helping Huey. Yeah. Like yeah. you just use this girl, you, all this stuff, and at the end you just want to. You're trying to kill her. Yeah. And she's cool with that. You're like, I'm cool with you trying to kill me. Yeah. And it's like, mm. well, not nah, like you know, Huey, Huey, Huey didn't try and kill her. But no, but he he did. Yeah, home, he tried to shoot. Homeboy shot yeah, her with yeah. the sniper. Yeah, yeah. And Huey was ran shit. off with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be like. Yeah. I, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and then, but and then she comes back because she's the cool girlfriend. Like, yeah. it's uh, manic pixie dream girl. Right like there. that's what I'm saying, man. That's, I felt like that was a little too like convenient. Where it's like it's a, it's yeah. a male fantasy. Well, it's, it's fucking. That's where I was like, it's predictable. You know, I knew she yeah. was gonna come back. Like a lot of shit, you knew what was gonna happen. Like before it happened. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Um, which is you know again like, I guess I guess they thought. They, you know, they could tell the kind of traditional. And by the way, it's not a traditional story at all. I think the problem is that like us as a culture have been have been so emulated in the superhero craze for so long that we have gotten so much of the normal superhero movie, and we have gotten so much of the subversive superhero movie that the subversive t- the the subversive superhero TV show isn't just really that groundbreaking anymore because that's a good point like we said we've seen the incredibles we've seen my hero academia we've seen um you know we've seen Watchmen. we've seen like literally all of these movies logan kick ass logan um shit there was one that came out last year what came out last year i can't even remember um but we've seen these like self-reflective superhero movies time and time the and time James again Gunn one came out bright uh, oh yeah yeah bright burn super back in 2010 was also super. a superhero yeah. send up like we've we've been in the superhero craze for so long that the subversive ones aren't like it isn't that groundbreaking yeah yeah isn't yeah. isn't the same anymore so yeah I, I mean it's you know to to each his own i feel like 
you know, if the boys had came out in like 2010, it probably would have won like every Emmy, sure. and you know, it would have been like the craziest thing in the world. But yeah, it, let's let's go let's go to a little bit of the positive. Like I said before, I'm the biggest Supernatural fan, and some of my favorite stuff is like the the dark humor in Supernatural, and you can tell mm-hmm. like this is the guy who made Supernatural. Mm-hmm. That's why I love it. There's a lot of funny moments in mm-hmm. these shows, um, and also what I do like is I do like the world building. I do like the idea of trying to get superheroes to go into the military like the whole senator's yeah. plan of mm-hmm. like him shooting that down and, and her uh the agency lady i forget the ceo yeah the, um, the breastfeeder yeah her yeah um trying to get the the bill to be passed that superheroes are allowed to do that yeah and like what's the line of like superheroes involvement that whole angle that whole stuff is just super cool yeah. i i love that stuff rb3 i don't know what you thought of it yeah, it was good. I mean, yeah, it's again, it's it's commentary on the military industrial complex. That's really how that goes. And I thought it was interesting how they even acknowledge that there's real, like, still war companies like Locking, um, you know, like 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 Lockhead, like like Northrop Grumman, all this all that stuff. I like how they reference that as in like those are the entities that are trying to stop this because they will have the most hurt. And that's true. That actually would. Um, they actually would. Imagine if Disney came into to Congress and was like, "We want to take over war." <laughs> yeah, and I, I can only imagine the pushback that like the military industrial complex would have. Um, so I think a lot of that stuff was really. I think a lot of that stuff was really dope. I think her character in particular like really confused me. Um, mm, really? Yeah, I, I kind of liked her. Well, the whole besides the whole milk titty shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, a little yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. everything else, I was like, "Oh, it's cool." I She's just like a big boss lady who's like. Yeah. Trying to get bills passed and like manipulating situations. And- yeah, yeah. I just didn't like. I feel like her character didn't really have like a moral compass per se. Like she only got mad at the deep for the whole like jerking himself off in front of yeah. the girls. Yeah, and we'll like, get to that too. after you know after yeah after the controversy. But to me, it's like when I don't know. I guess to me, when I see a character do something like that, I'm like, okay, so like you really don't have any principles other than making money, which I yeah. guess that's the point of her character. That is kind of the point. Uh, but I don't like her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess it is good characterization, but yeah, I don't, but I don't even understand what like Homelander sees in her though. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I don't understand like why he's spends the whole season, like groveling over her, even especially at the end when, <laughs> when he just zaps her heaven, like with no, with no regard. Like, I don't understand like why, would you know, but yeah. Again, oh. edgy for the sake of being edgy. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like that. I, I, I like that episode, and I like that. I, I felt it as, like, there's nothing that Homelander is attached to, yeah. where it's, like, even the stuff he likes and even, like, people he can fall in love with mm. is still, like, not significant enough for him because mm. he sees himself so above everyone. He sees himself as God, mm. essentially. So if I'm God, even the stuff that entertains me for a minute, I'm going to get bored of it, and I can get rid of it without a thought. That that's kind of what the vibe I got from that scene and that whole interaction right. um, from Homelander, right. um, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But I I I I really dug like some some moments from him. Mm-hmm. Um, that scene when he when he goes into whatever it is Iran or Iraq or Pakistan. oh yeah 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 yeah. Yo. That was the first scene I saw. That was the first scene I saw. Like, Yo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine, bro? Superman's yeah. after your ass. Ooh. Yeah, nah, nah. He's like slicing you in half with his lasers. Yeah, it's like, bro, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. do shit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that, that was a weird first thing to see for the season for me, like, because that was literally yeah. the first thing I saw. I was like, whoa, like, that does, like, offer up a big, like, moral question. Like, if if Superman, now imagine if if Superman wasn't, like, government sanctioned, like, mm-hmm. and he could just go over there and do that shit, like, all himself. Like, will somebody arrest him? Like, you can't. I'm sure half that shit would be, like, war crimes, though. Like, yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But you can I, see that soldiers are terrified. Yeah, but again, it's the they're, watch. They're it, like, oh my God. Well, see, that's <laughs> this the, is horrifying. That's the, that's the Watchmen parallel, right? Too. Like, where, um, where in Watchmen, they show how Dr. Manhattan interacts, like, during the Vietnam War. And mm. literally, the Viet Cong are, like, on their hands and knees, bowing down. Uh, you know, like, once you, ha- if you have an, an all powerful force on your side, there's it's, it's like unstoppable. Yeah, exactly. So. That you're right, bro. This that that Watchman shit is, is yeah, spot on. Yeah, yeah. Because he yeah. and then he even when, literally... when, I forgot uh, Doctor Manhattan did that, but yeah, he yeah. Does. And he literally blows up somebody in like a Viet in a Vietnam bar, and nobody says shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's just that's just the power that 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 power comes. Because what can you do? It's yeah, literally like yeah. you have this unstoppable force on your side, right, which right. is why it's so terrifying. Right. Like. Like, if you really think about it, like, on a global atmosphere, if I have Superman on my side, 
Mm. Um, Watchmen even talks about it. Where like, mm. what are you gonna do, Russia? Yeah, yeah. Fire all your missiles. Fire all your damn missiles. I got Doctor Manhattan. He can make him disappear at the snap of his fingers. Yeah. Like you can't do shit. And yeah. that if I'm China or if I'm Russia, I'm horrified. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm so scared of the U.S. Bad. Because the U.S isn't the good guy in this situation and it isn't the good guy in this show no. because the it's 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 filled with greed yeah. well yes isn't the good guy <laughs> in, in any situation yeah yeah we're trying to be rb3 yeah trying to be i don't know nah, i'm, I'm more not. optimistic in that sense yeah um for our future rb3 i don't yeah, know yeah. but but in this show it's like it's so corporatized the superhero world militarized yeah uh and then it, when it comes to the religious aspect, the way they use that to manipulate the the masses right. to make them believe that this is all part of this grand plan, yeah, and like then God that's made, that yeah. God made him, and it's like this superhero chosen plan ones. and the chosen yeah, ones and yeah. all this stuff, and it's like that's even worse because yeah. then you have like the religious aspect of it and the yeah. church going. Well, that's how it. that's how it's like brainwashed into the people like in this universe. Um, what I do think is super interesting too, and you know, I completely forgot about this until now. Um, the fact that the V compound V compound, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, v, v compound. Um, like the fact that um that Vought was actually putting those in um the war torn territories and giving those uh, and giving the formula to terrorists so then they could uh, so they create can create villains. their own terrorists. So you know they'll always be in business. That's exactly what the United States has done consistently, like throughout history. We're literally um, arming um, um, jihadists right now, jihadist rebels um, right now in in the Middle East. So it just you know it's a it's a consistent cycle as as if we're funding our own war on both sides just to keep the military industrial complex happy. Yeah. So and that's like Vought taking matters into their own hands and. Making sure they're funding both sides of the war too. Yeah, and it's war profiteering as war well. War profiteering, yeah. Yeah, where yeah. you're trying to get war started. I just rewatched Star Trek Into Darkness, yeah. uh, and that's literally the whole plot of that movie, and I still find it kind of fascinating. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I love, 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 love that part of the finale where it's like we made supervillains, and like, yeah. what do you do now? Like, you have to have superheroes now. Yeah. Where they're they're always going to be in the market. They're always always going to be this need this like supply and demand now of superheroes where it's profit now where yeah. we're now we're we're bu- we're paying or buying superheroes to send them off to Pakistan or send them off to Syria and and fight wars because now there's people who have superpowers in other countries and now we can legally go into world wars mm. and 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 have that be a part of the the United States it's terrifying yeah. um so it's a, it like a, it's a very bleak uh, point of view when it comes to this stuff, which is kind of why I, I, I do I did want a little bit of the positive side because it's w- what kind of bothered me RB three is the fact that it's one of those things where it's like Carl Urban's character I forget his name already um, Butcher Butcher has this idea that superheroes are bad and we're gonna kill them and it's like bro like not all of them can be bad there's no like st- statistically. Mm-hmm. There's no possible way they can all be bad. Yeah, this show went damn sure out of his way to show that every single one of them was complete trash. Like, no, but what besides I, Starlight, besides Starlight, yeah, but, but yeah. that's what I'm saying, and that kind of bothered me because I was like, wait, you're telling me that how many did they say there was superheroes? Seven or no, I don't know how many they said overall. But. I think they said there's like a, a couple they dozen s- in each state, right? Yeah. So let's multiply that times fifty. Yeah. There, there's at least hundreds yeah, of superheroes yeah. out of yeah. hundreds of superheroes. You're telling me they're all, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. there has to be a, a little bit of, <laughs> of you know, yeah. light and dark between all this kind of stuff nah, that's they, going on. They went, out, they went out of their that's fucking way to just show you everybody's a complete. Except also the Wonder Woman stand in, I forget her actual name. Maeve. Queen, Queen Maeve. Queen Maeve, yeah. yeah uh, she, uh, she's not the worst either, you know? Like, yeah. she, she tried to save the people on the plane. She's still manipulated, uh, though. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to the let's go to the uh, the church panel episode. Well, I do want to say though, I think did I already mention the deep like jerking himself off in front of Starlight? Oh, you want to go to that first? Was well, that is that first episode or? Mm, yes, it is. Oh, okay, okay. Um, all right, let's. let's I just want to I just wanted to just wanted to mention like that's a real life Hollywood situation. Yeah. So. so so this movie, this show, I'm sorry, it goes out of its way to kind of. Talk about the, the Me, Me Too. Too movie. It's kind of weird. like it doesn't do it really well. RB three. I don't know if you agree. Sure, yeah. It kind of it's awkward. I don't know. It's yeah, super yeah, awkward yeah. the way they do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you you thought it was awkward too, but I, I yeah. thought it was kind of like 
it was weird. Yeah. I don't know. It just felt like where she's like, don't touch me again. I'm a woman. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can tell a dude wrote this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, felt, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And it then it's like a running sure. theme of, of the whole uh, season as far as, like, he got me too. He got canceled. So yeah, now he's, like, yeah, all yeah. sad and he's in Ohio <laughs> and he's talking to fish and yeah, yeah. he's trying to find himself. And yeah. I, I, did that work for you, RB3? I don't know. Well, it didn't, I don't know if it, like, worked, but it, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was, like, funny. It's, re- that, it's real. That's yeah, a real situation. Real. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is real. But I, again, like, um, I think the fact that he, I think the fact that the deep had the kind of ego, the kind of ego that, he could just do that to like the new girl like which by the way it's not like she's like the intern like that's literally like the seventh member of the team like yeah i thought that was a little like come on man but i think otherwise like she i I think she could have had the power to say something like before you know sure but um but um i do think that you know at least at the very least it does address somewhat of the kind of poisonous toxic situation that is like power dynamics and stuff like that but uh I don't think it did it like particularly well, but at least it did it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt awkward. Yeah, yeah. And it the was way awkward, they would go yeah. to cut to Twitter and just be like, "I'm on her side," and I was like, "Cool." <laughs> I guess. I don't know, because then, and then the running. Uh, well, let's get into. Let's start. Let's start with the deep. Why not? I was gonna get into characters, but the yeah. deep. Yeah. <laughs> did at any point throughout Great the season, <laughs> did you feel bad for the deep? No, no. Really? No, no. I did. You did. Yes. Man, like. I felt bad for the deep. Yeah, really. And I like, maybe just because. Because what? Like when, maybe just because I'm a really hardcore animal rights person. RB three. Yeah. Oh, when they killed the lobster friend. It, n- all of that stuff didn't yeah. work for me. Yeah. It just didn't work. <laughs> Obviously, the, it was funny and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I really feel like the Aquaman vibe of like helping the marine life and helping all that stuff is actually. It really important. <laughs> and, it is really in, important in our world today. But I think the, so. I feel like the, the, why are we making the joke out of the, like the joke? The I don't joke, know. RB3. The joke is that Aquaman's always been a joke. Like that's I get the that, joke. but like the <laughs> help save marine li- uh, 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 sea Always life and help dolphin. save all this stuff and like that yeah, to yeah, me yeah, yeah. actually is really important to me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. very like vocal about this stuff. Yeah. So the fact that it was like a punchline, I don't know, man. Yeah. And that's super personal for me. Like yeah. I can't. Hate on you for loving it, because yeah. obviously, it was, you know, if some people find it funny, it's funny. Right. But for me, I was like, bro, maybe I'm rooting for this guy because he's actually going out of his way to like <laughs> try to help like yeah. creatures and try to help the sea life and try to save the freaking ocean yeah. and the planet. Yeah. Like that's actually important. I don't yeah. know. I, it just took it just those little moments where I'm like, you know what? I'm Team Deep. Yeah, Count me in. Team Deep. Even after. See, that's the thing. I think I think the show showed you the first. I think the show's literal first introduction of the deep yeah. is him like with his dick out. In front yeah, of the girl. I think that's the show's but way the of telling you. the show, you, like, it showed you, you know, the the it tr- it goes out of its way to kind of make you want to feel bad for the guy. Yeah, doesn't it? I mean, I think that's the I think the show's intent is like to make him the most irredeemable character and try and, to get and you then to try redeem. to redeem him. Yeah, but I don't think I to me is like to me. You don't think like, he got redeemed at all? No, I I think okay. the show just fucking. I think the show like doesn't. They don't have a hero moment for him at the end, do they? Like, they don't have a thing for him. They don't have a hero moment. They have, like, a feel bad for him moment, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be feel bad for him. I took it as laugh at this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, like the lobster thing was funny. No, no, all this stuff. I'm saying the end, end. Which was the end, Was still laugh at him? Which one? When he's, like, naked and shaving himself. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, To me, I was laughing. Yeah, I was fucking laughing. Like... It's this, I mean, it's like ultimate depression. And watch, he's probably gonna be a super villain next next year. You think too. so? Yeah, probably. Maybe Damn. I don't know. This, maybe. This is a guess. Um, but to me, that shit was just funny. I mean, Interesting. I don't know. Like, to I, me, it, was just, it was just a. I don't know. I, I just found it fascinating because I was like, oh, they're really going out of your way to be like, yeah, this guy sucks. Yeah. F this guy. And then part of me was like, wait, wait a minute. Are they trying to be? Are they trying to say that him being canceled is a bad thing? Yeah. Because now. You know he's, he's he's so down on his luck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you are know, they trying to make us feel bad for him? You know, you know, you know what that is. You know why you feel that way. Yeah. You know why I feel this way. Why? It's bad storytelling. That's all it comes down to. Mm. Like, <laughs> there's no there's is. no more compass to the show. Because he was like. kind of just a punchline for the joke. Yeah. And I totally yeah, understood yeah, that. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, oh, are they? 
Like the scene when he's like, "You suck, you're ugly," and, and like he shows his, and I was like, "Right, oh. the gills." Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, "Are they trying yeah. to make us feel bad for him?" Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's bad storytelling. I yeah. mean, that's just that's honestly. I think when we chalk down a lot of the problems that people have with the show, or at least that I have with the show, sure. it just comes down to not having a fully thought out idea. It's more for the, it's going more for the joke than it is for an actual thing, you know. Yeah, so. let's talk about uh, let's talk about the boys. Uh, who stands out from this team? We have Mother's Milk. We have Frenchie. We have the Japanese girl. The female is her name. It's female. Uh, we have Huey, kind of being the the shonen character the, the, yeah, the bright-eyed the, and bushy-tailed young boy who's yeah. thrown into a dire situation and he has to man up yeah. kind of thing yeah. super anime like incredibly anime yeah uh, i don't know how much shonen anime you watch but that's literally the th- the mm-hmm. formula of this yeah. kind of storytelling where he's yeah. like i don't know what i'm doing i'm just this and uh, i came from this but now i have to find myself and yeah. become a man kind of yeah. thing that's kind of like huey's character as a whole All right. All right. um what do you think about the team um, team is cool. I mean, the team is. I feel like. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like the 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 team almost came second fiddle to like the rest of the universe. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like in the show. I mean, the show's called the boys, but I feel like the the seven is probably the more appropriate title for the show because I feel like we spend more time with those heroes than we do with like the actual protagonist. Maybe I'm mistaken in that, or maybe I was just more interested in the hero storyline. I don't know, but I think that. The, the 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 guys in and of themselves. I mean, you know, the butcher doesn't really have a moral. You know, he doesn't. He 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 just wants to kill every superhero, superhero that he can find. Um, which again, I guess if your wife was raped and by Homelander and like all this, uh, and they tell you that she's dead, but she's not really dead. I mean, and again, like I guess that's what also kind of got me weird about the show because like. I could also see from a mile away that she wasn't going to be dead the whole time, you know? Um, but um, but he had an arc. I feel like Ar- Huey, Huey had an arc. He had a motivation, but I just wish he would have just committed to something. Like, it felt like almost every episode he was, like, flipping back and forth, like, oh, like, I'm so into it. Or the next week is like, ah, but, like, I like my new, like, superhero girlfriend. Ah, but, like, I want to get A-Train. You know, it's like it, it just kept going back and forth yeah. and back and forth. Interesting. Like, from for that. So I mean, that's my only thing. Yeah, yeah. let's let's talk about Huey, because he's our he's our main character and he's kind of our POV. Yeah. Um it, it, we come from this rage moment of like, I wanna kill A Train kind of thing, right? And that's right. kind of what sets him down on this path. And then he kills Translucent, and then he finally gets A Train and he doesn't kill him and he feels bad for A Train. Uh, and I'm like, at the end when he's having a heart attack. Yeah, and I'm like, bruh, you exploded a guy <laughs> for shits and giggles, <laughs> and the gr- the guy who killed your girlfriend. Now you feel bad for him. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. Like, All right. did that make sense to you or no? Um, and and, I get and again, it. the show goes out of its way to make you feel for a train. Yeah. You know, he's like his girlfriend, his his brother. He's trying yeah. to be the fastest but, man alive. But then again, like again, he's got like, a sad story. But it, again, like he has, he's they show him as morally irredeemable too. I mean, he literally kills. But his they're going. Like, but they're go, <laughs> they save him at the end. They go out of their way to to tell you that that mm-hmm. let's A Train is is in his own world and he has to deal with shit. Mm-hmm. Like when he's shopping and and he has that security guy following him. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it mm-hmm. goes out of its way to to make you root. Quote end quote for A Train. Right. Does it work? I mean, he's a, he's a likable character for that, sure, and I think uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I like the stuff with him and Pop Pop Claw. Yeah, like the whole idea. I, I mean, as I don't, you know, as I don't want to say, I don't want to say it as a as a bad thing against the boys because I feel like I've said a lot of bad things about this show. But yeah. and there's um, a lot of good. Yeah, there's a lot of good. But um, but. The whole I, the whole story of the of the black girlfriend and I mean the ba- the black boyfriend and the white girl who are like hooked on heroin or crack or in this case V um, and then one of them overdoses I mean that's just some shit we've seen like hundred Virginia times too you know what I mean so it's yeah. like cool at least it was like a superhero I thought it was funny that I was a superhero and that he's juicing to literally like be a runner um, and I do like the whole athletes to superhero comparison that they make throughout the show, even so much to where not A-Train, but the, uh, another black superhero, I forgot the exact name of him, um, where where the head boss lady 
and the mayor of Baltimore having a, a whole conversation like, oh, you should have this black superhero. Like he fits like with your, oh, with yeah, your, yeah. With your demographics. It's going to be 200 million. <laughs> to have, I'm like, damn, 200 million for one superhero? But that's, I mean, that's really how like NBA contracts behind the scenes mm-hmm. shit goes. Like they're just trading players left and right, same way they're just trading superheroes. Yeah. Um, so, but, and, and the, but, you know, A Train sees that, and that's why he needs to stay competitive and has to feel like he's the fastest runner um, and has to hold on to that title. Um, so it has some good stuff. It has some lackluster stuff. But, I mean, overall, like, I did I did really enjoy having um, having a black stand-in for the Flash. <laughs> mm. uh, and, you know, being the fastest. It kind of... Even the racial parallels are like inevitable there too. Sure, so. sure. It's, it's, Even though there was like the, the next guy was like a Latino guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one right next to him. <laughs> yeah, Andrew I forgot Richie his name. Adam. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So did you like the character of A Train? He's the I first mean, guy we see do something. Yeah, after, terrible. And yeah. then at the end, we're supposed to root for him. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, nah, he's he's irredeemable too. I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I. I. To me, he he lost redeemability when he killed his girlfriend though. So that's what I I'm can, saying. Uh, you know. Um, when he killed his own girlfriend. Yeah, when he killed his own girlfriend. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, let's talk about Frenchie. What do you think of uh, this character? He's an Israeli actor. Oh, nice. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, he's not even, like, <laughs> French at all. Yeah. But is he, like, from France? Or? No, he's just Israeli. Oh, that's dope, <laughs> man. Hey, good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, good, his name is Tamor Capon. Hey, nice. Um, I think he's just Israeli. Yeah. What do you think of his character? That is cool. I mean, he didn't really have, like, a whole lot, like, you know, Depth wise, but sure. I think he was a fun character, and um, and his romance with the crazy um, ja- Japanese girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said it, not me. So well, that's what. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Karen Fukuhara, who plays, uh, I believe, Katana. Is she in related Suicide to Squad. to Carrie Fukun? Oh, uh, oh, oh, she does. Yeah. Oh, nice. She's in their superhero property. Yeah, yeah. She barely had a walk on cameo in, in that movie. Yeah. And Suicide Squad. This is Katana. She's got my back. <laughs> yeah. I would advise not getting killed by her. Her sword <laughs> takes the souls of every person she kills. <laughs> yeah, she might have had more show, more lines in this show than she did in that movie. Like, uh, I might be wrong. This might not be her. No, it is her. It's, it's her. It's her. <laughs> Damn, man. Um, One Japanese girl per, per, per superhero franchise? Is that what we're doing? Um, no. Uh, there's a... Who's the other... The one in uh, Wolverine, the Wolverine. Well, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah she's good too. She's she's in everything. She's yeah. amazing. I love. And her. I also thought the you know not you know not the same character obviously, but I love that this like the D t- is like the X. Uh, I said D twenty three, X twenty three um, kind of stand in like for yes. this. For she's this. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. She's the she's literally family. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like so. she has the the berserker mode and everything. Like yeah, she has, yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's literally a straight killer. Yeah, Three Hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was dope. Yeah, it's super cool. It's very interesting. I I, I like their dynamic. Maybe maybe just the, this idea of like maybe maybe because the the show is like painting this black and white picture, and Frenchie's the only one who's like, wake up, you idiots, like. Mm. We have to kill her, man. I mean, that's what we gotta do. And it's like, bro, it's not that black and white. We can talk yeah. to her, even if she can't talk. We can yeah. try to communicate. Right. Let's try to be humans. Right. And the whole team, Mother's Milk, freaking Butcher, is like, well, bro, we gotta take her head. And yeah. it's like, it's not that black and white. And maybe that's why I liked Frenchie. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's the one character that I latched onto because he's got the moral compass of like using common human sense. decency and yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, that that's one thing that stood out to me where it's like, bro, you can't just be that black and white about every situation. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, things that go into people's lives. Yeah. You, like chill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe that's why I related to him. The um, most. what'd you think of Haley Joe Asman as the, uh, sidekick? That was funny. That's dude. probably the most meta yeah. part that they could <laughs> give He them. comes up in every he's in uh, Future Man. He comes up all right. in all Seth Rogen's stuff. All all right. TV uh, stuff. Yeah. 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 But see I think it's funny that he in this show he was the kid yes. actor who was right. like super popular. That's so the kid, yeah. And then just and then also his whole thing is like reading people's hands, like, you know, see I guess seeing visions, like same thing as like uh you know, seeing dead people in um in the uh, Shyamalan. Like what the fuck was that movie called, man? Six Sense. Six Sense. There it yeah. is. Yeah, I've been sitting here thinking about that. But yeah, it's just so funny that that's his power here and the kid actor thing. It's just too perfect. It's perfect. It was know? great. I wish they would have actually used footage from like 
his early movies, like in the in the actual kid advertisement shit, like yeah, and just maybe like digitally. By the way, is DC gonna pull up on Amazon and like sue them <laughs> for this show? Like, nah, this, this is, is probably almost too similar. Uh, but it's it's parody, right? Yeah, but I, you could just be like, like, it's a parody. I know, but this is too similar, bro. The Superman and yeah. the Homelander, like literally exact same powers, the exact same Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, like it's literally. Flash. I mean, Aquaman. you can you can interpret Martian Manhunter and Translucent as like the same True. person, yeah. Black Noir and Batman. Yeah. Like it's really too similar. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 you can just file this under parody. Yeah, like that's yeah. your defense for it. Yeah, and that's yeah. how they don't get sued. It's just yeah. be like it's a parody. Yeah, easy. Yeah, that's, I mean that's, that's, that's how I would pitch it. This is the if most I was a lawyer. I know, but this is the most on the nose parody I think I've seen. At least like Watchmen is kind of subtle with it, you yeah. know. Like, like uh, who's who? Night Owl. Night Owl is like a combination of different people. The other girls a combination of people. Sure. They all combinations of people, but like this is just like straight. You know, it's crazy. It um, it very much is like a rip off of yeah, the main yeah. characters. Yeah, Justice League. Yeah, Hall yeah. of Justice and all that. Yeah, yeah, room. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um. All right. Uh. We got to go to break. Yeah. Uh. After break, we'll talk about a little bit more. I kind of want to talk about the religious aspects of this show, and I'm, I know we talked about it a little bit, but there's yeah. like three episodes on it so I think we should talk about it a little yeah, bit more for sure. um, let's go to break alright guys we're back talking about The Boys Amazon original TV show uh, I want to talk about the religious aspects of this show and there's like an entire episode dedicated to this like event this like church wide yeah. event mm-hmm. where one of the main uh, superheroes one of the, a, fav- a very famous superhero mm-hmm. um, I already forgot his name yeah. Uh, stretchy hands. Uh, <laughs> He's supposed to be a uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, He's fantastic. But um, what which is... I thought was f- the the scene when they go into the club and then he's like getting sucked off by one dude yeah. and he goes over to the other side, yeah. stretches over. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, um, I I don't see his name right here, so I apologize. But either way, you get the the image. You know who I'm talking about. All right. Um, he's supposed to be this very vocal televangelist preacher, yeah. very famous. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also very anti-LGBT, anti-homosexuality, and he thinks it's a sin and it's evil, and he preaches about this kind of stuff. Right. Well, at the same time, he's obviously very openly homosexual, and he does whatever he wants, and right. he, he he's a very vocal hypocrite. Right. It's the, the classic hypocrite, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the classic, like, preacher, you know, um, class of did, you know, yeah, hypocrisy that a lot of, a lot of actual real-life people... Uh, I'm kind of get caught up is <laughs> yes, uh, very much so. Who's, so the, who's the who's the preacher? Eddie Long. Uh, um, Eddie Long who was like the. I thought that was funny. His name was Eddie Long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Long. <laughs> okay, I guess that's just me. <laughs> All right, whatever. Like the deep. You think yeah, it's the funny? deep? Yeah, <laughs> that was a yeah. good one too. Yeah, man, this show's made for you, bro. Hey, man. Uh, but either way, uh, full disclosure. I used to, uh, I grew up in the church, obviously, and I, I used yeah. to intern for, for a lot of the youth groups and all that stuff. So I'm very, very, very familiar to how church, churches run mm. in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of politics there. And, and maybe that's kind of why I was turned off to a lot of it. Mm. Um, but I still try to be a little bit more positive and I try to see the positive of it. Right. However, there is a lot of politics in church and there mm. is a lot of politics in in. in uh, religion and in faith and currently in the United States. So it's a very interesting angle, the fact that they're selling you that these superheroes were somehow chosen mm-hmm. to be divine and to be chosen by God to to lead their flock, so to say. Right. Um, and this is the example we get of it. And mm-hmm. the fact that any uh, starlight, mm-hmm. any January, is grew up with this community so she knows it very well and she's being used as a tool to being told what to say yeah right. what'd you think of this episode rb3 yeah I, I thought it was interesting i think it uh it really goes to show the exploitation that uh the exploitation of religion and how that helps ease in a lot of like outlandish beliefs you know um i think the whole idea of using of turning of, of you know we you know the whole general theme of the show is that like the superheroes are the chosen ones, right? Mm. They're the ones that were picked. Ham- they say that in this episode, handpicked by God, you know, um, which is, uh, you know, it plays into what the real life implications of the storytelling device of the chosen one narrative, you know, the chosen one narrative that Harry Potter has, all these other big franchises has. It goes to show how in the real world that would be implicated, like how in the real world 
we do believe in the chosen one <laughs> narrative with Jesus Christ. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I was gonna say Donald Trump. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last I mean, week? He called himself yeah, the chosen yeah, one. I was, I was, <laughs> He's the second Trump, coming of God, Trump, bro. Trump, he Trump, tweeted this yeah, out. I know, I, I, second no, coming of God. It out. This is who yeah. <laughs> evangelical support RB3. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I tweeted it out. I Jesus know. Christ. I know. I know. But hey man, listen. Every church <laughs> in the United States should be ashamed. Yeah. God. Um, hey man, he <laughs> if Trump want to keep calling himself, I mean, but that goes to show you what kind of man he is, though. You know what I mean? And that goes to show you he doesn't even believe uh, in God. Yeah, well, it goes to show. I mean, didn't you? There was all, he doesn't read the Bible. I was gonna say, did you see a clip yeah. of the Bible? Yeah, <laughs> they're like, what's he your favorite verse? He has no verse? clue. He's never read it in his life. <laughs> never even picked up. That and shit. Christians love this guy. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah. wake up. All yeah. right, back on track. But that was funny. Um, but, but this is why I, this is why it's real, right? That's why people. Why, that's why the show yeah. brought it up, right? right? Right, right, and it's real, and it's real to the extent that it is used for uh, political sake too. Hundred I mean, percent. Companies do go out there and use um, religion as a, as a source to like monetize, yeah. monetization, um, and I think you know it also speaks to uh, um, it also speaks a lot to. The whole idea of religion and, and the implications of that is also the fear mongering, right? Like Homelander goes out there and he's like, I can't say this corporate speech. Like it's, it's too safe. Like if we want to rile people up, we got to get them excited. Blame the foreigners, blame the aliens, like all that. And he goes out there and gives like a, a dog whistle speech, you know, about how um, about we should go to other countries and kill and kill brown people because that's just that's just uh, God's divine right. You know, like. That's that's lit- that's quite literally what he says like during yeah. that speech and that monologue during that time. So that's I mean that's real life too. That's that's what that's honestly like you know a lot of times these corporations give um, these preachers and these uh, owners of like these mega churches um, you know speeches and a megaphone to say some really bigoted shit and to say some stuff that's going to lead us into more wars or you know um, more you know environmental. Um, um, you know, climate stuff. I mean, we uh, we we both. I think we both had that Ethan Hawke movie last year, First Reformed. Hundred percent. That's, that's a movie where the church directly go comes in between environmental initiative uh, because it's like you know getting uh, sponsorship from the companies that are doing the irresponsible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in stuff, that same so, movie, Ethan yeah. Hawke's character goes out of his way to say, "Wait a minute, this is God's planet, All right. and if my purpose in life is to lead people to God, wouldn't God be?" concerned with saving this right, right. Um, that you know there's always two sides to this and I feel right. like you know we get this giant corporate corporatized version of church which is re- it really is especially Christianity right. and, and we don't see the Ethan Hawks right obviously mm. this is a whole different story because it's ca- craziness in that movie right. but but at the same time it's one of those things where it's like if we really turn things around and I feel like there's a lot of people currently in the media doing this RB3 mm. and I'm very vocal and supportive of them being someone of faith myself right, right and right. if I'm of faith then I have to be saying things that I believe that are according to my faith mm. and if that's the case then according to my faith what we're doing on the border is tragedy and yeah. freaking Jesus Christ would be crying tears no. of blood right now mm. of, of the horrific things we're committing and the horrific things the United States commits in general yeah. all in the name of God like the, the the blasphemy that we use the name of God to hate people mm-hmm. and to to condemn them, yeah. and it's like it's the complete opposite of, of everything that mm-hmm. Christianity should stand for. Right. But that's a whole different conversation. It's, uh, Stephen Colbert is an example of someone who's very mm-hmm. vocal about that, right, right, right about right, his right. his faith, and he's like, oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't support anything that yeah. is going on right now. Nah, yeah, me too. And you know, it's I'm, I feel like people. You know, pick and choose what they want to take from the Bible. Yeah. Like, and I think the show even does a good job of addressing this too. Where it's like it, Starlight's character. Yeah, Starlight's character. She's says like, I'm a Christian, but Jesus, yeah. calm down. Yeah, yeah. Well, she even says, she even says like, she says the Bible says you can't eat shrimp. Like, why, why aren't y'all motherfuckers following that one? <laughs> yeah. It literally says don't eat shellfish. You know, right next to the part where it says don't be gay, it says don't eat shellfish and don't wear clothes of more than two fabrics. Like. I yeah. want to go around to every Christian dude and just be like, yo, like, let me see the fabric. Let me see a tag on your shirt. Like, yeah. is it two fabrics? You committed a sin. Boom, you're gone to hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's just, but people people pick and choose what they want um, to support their bigotry. And that's the same mm-hmm. thing back in slavery days, you know? Mm-hmm. The, they, they took specific passages out of the Bible 
that uh, that were written in support of slavery. But did they they completely ignored the parts where the slaves were freed or the slaves fought for independence? Um, but that's not something that you know they used that warped interpretation of the Bible to keep black people enslaved. So mm. yeah, there's there's a lot there, and and it's it's interesting. However, I, I do feel like there is a lot of like villainization of the church, and I'm not necessarily pro that. Yeah, Ezekiel, Ezekiel was the character. Ezekiel, name, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Um, there's a lot of uh, villainization of yeah, there it is, uh, yeah, hundred percent. And and I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, RB three. Maybe you can debate me on that, um, because I think painting everything with a broad brush, seeing it on both extremes, is not necessarily a good thing. And I feel like I've spoken to you about this off camera about like there's this weird disconnection between people of faith and and you know politics and all this stuff, right? Where I feel like there needs to be more examples of people like who are vocal and say, no, this is against what I believe. Maybe that's why someone like a Mayor Pete has stood out to me quite a bit is because he's probably one of the few people doing this. Um, but I also said Stephen Colbert is another example of it. But there's plenty of examples. Um, so maybe that's why a part of this episode kind of was like, mm, I don't know. I like part of what they're saying. I don't like the other side of what they're saying because yeah. it's just such a giant broad brush. Yeah, I mean, it is It is very heavily stereotyping. It's very and, stereotypical. Um, it's very, and, you know, I mean, it just, there's there's a lot of material these days that, like, go very heavy on Christian ideology and mythology. I guess to me, to me at least, uh, I guess I just kind of not, like, ignore it, but I'm just like, I guess I, I, I don't really have a big as big of a problem with it sure. because I do understand that like historically throughout the hundreds of, the hundred not hundreds the 100 years of cinema that like we've had in America um, there it has been overwhelmingly Christian dominated so for the majority of that so yeah um, Th- this also to bring to going off that same thing this show also goes out of its way to tell you, oh, they're terrorists on a plane, and they all happen to be brown, yeah. all happen to be Muslim, yeah, yeah. and they're going well, they, yeah, to a country show, to kill sh- Muslim people. It's yeah. like, do we yeah. really want to see that? The right show, now? the show, the show paints everybody in the broad show. Yeah, you know? it's very broad. Like I said, it's the the bl- the black girlfriend, white or the black the black dude, white girlfriend, drunkie. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the broad show. I mean, everything is literally just the most, and that's why I said like stereotypical. It's very, that's why I said it's the, it's a very deep. And very deep and very important when it comes to the themes that it's addressing. A very simplistic and very minimalist and very standard when it comes to like the actual story and the characterizations mm. and shit like that. You know. Yeah. So it's 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 that's why I always feel conflicted about this show. You know. Absolutely. Um, but but I feel like there is a lot of conversation, obviously, because of the craziness that's been going on in the Middle East mm. uh, and 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 in America of the treatment of of, of people, especially uh, some Ilan Omar. Oh, yeah. Someone who's currently in Congress and who's being attacked because of her faith. Yeah. Um, so that's a big deal. Like yeah. this, this happens. Yeah. So I, I think it's not necessarily the best thing yeah. to do. <laughs> well, the riot, there's been a, an, an, um, an insane rise in hate crimes towards um, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters mm-hmm. um, in the wake of the Trump presidency. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like if you really get down to, to the, mu- the Muslim faith, and, and I've dabbled, I'm, I ha- I'm not necessarily an expert. Mm-hmm. However, you realize when when it comes to this uh, this idea uh, of Allah and God and and everything it connects and and, and it's this irony RB three that so many Christianities condemn uh, uh, the Muslim community to think that the Muslim community is looking at the Christians like bro y'all tripping yeah. like y'all y'all claim to believe in God and y'all worse than than anyone you claim to be bad because they're Muslim. Like, it's this back and forth of just, like, this ironic nature. And it all comes down to one thing, and that's extremism, right? Yeah. yeah. You take something from the Word of God, you know, on either side. Interpret it a certain way. Interpret it a certain way and use it to justify your hatred, justify your anger, justify whatever it is to make an enemy out of someone or something and use that to persecute. Right. And it's been going down. That's the history. It's the been history le- happening for thousands yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. here we are. Yeah. And it's just an interesting idea of, like, if superheroes were real, that would have to factor in, right? Because yeah. yeah. there has to be some sort of explanation for them existing. Right. And they use God to be that explanation. Right, right, so. right. And, and, again, it's, you know, they use it as the explanation, but in all honesty, it's manufactured imagery, you know, in the mm-hmm. same way that 
white people have told us all this all these years that Jesus is a white dude with brown hair and sandals. Yeah. When you look at the actual historical place that he was born in and where you know where he's at, he's actually a brown dude. He's a black he's very dude. Brown, yeah. yeah. So the fuck is we getting this white dude for all these years? Yeah. Um, but that's that's the image that they want to paint. And same way in the show, the image they want to paint of the Christian Christianity is that. And also, by the way, I I forgot to I completely forgot to say this when we we're talking about the whole thing with Starlight and the sexual harassment thing. I thought it was really interesting how it is how they show a marketing department full of men when Star- after Starlight gives rape and they're like, oh, we gotta get, we gotta make her female empowerment, female empowerment. And they yeah. literally take more clothes off of her. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, this is female empowerment. This is great. Like two fucking guys. Like, totally. yeah. So I think that's, I think that's another part of it too. Like, and they, they make her cover back up when she goes to the church event because it's mm. like the conception it's like it's, it's not female empowerment when it comes to Christianity. You know, yeah. you have to preserve yourself before marriage and all that. So it's it's manipulating certain markets and yeah. knowing how, what sells in those markets. It's right. happening right now, RB three. Right, it's right, just right. that irony of like, oh, how do we get people to not be mad about this? Mm-hmm. Oh, let's just hire a person of color and they won't be mad about it. It's stuff like that. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. Like that happens. How do we not get people to hate Lion King? Let's put all the black people in it. Let's make all the let's make all the black. I didn't want to say it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's so, that's a big part of it, and it's yeah. it's interesting because I feel like we can't have that conversation right now. Yeah. I don't think we're, it's time, and I and I think you and I would probably be yeah. <laughs> thrown out the window. I do. We've been having <laughs> we'd be thrown off been, a building. Yeah. We've been having the edgy conversations for too long. Sure, but that, I feel like that's real edgy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about I don't want to touch that. I was listening to a podcast uh, for, uh The Watch it's called yeah. Yeah. and and one of the writers for the New York Times said that uh-huh. and everyone was like, "Oh, Moving on, can we just talk about? And I was like, it's not time, bro. It's yeah, not time. I'm gonna say, God damn it, Lion Ooh. King, Latin. Y'all not getting off my train, man. Just because, just because y'all gave Will Smith a movie, don't uh, mean that shit was was good, bro. Like, yeah, but I feel like, I don't know. That podcast got me mad because I feel like there, there's just so much. I'm allowed RB3 to enjoy the shit out of Aladdin, no. and I, I like people. People like you yeah. will come after me and be like, you support the Disney Corporation, blah, 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 <laughs> Monopoly. And I'm like, bro, chill. Like, chill, fam. Like, <laughs> I just like magic carpet rides <laughs> and, and, and monkeys. Yeah, and I think yeah. they're cute. Right. Like, right. damn, chill. But we, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think you're right. allowed to love Star Wars and to freak out over the, the D23 no, trailer. of course, of course. And, and of course. not be like you're supporting the monopolization of... Nah, and it's like, bro, I, f- I love Star Wars, man. Nah. I'm, I'm a buy all the damn t-shirts. Okay, like, I, I'm going to go to D23 listen, listen. and I'm enjoy the shit out of it. I get, Give me that capitalistic sandwich, bro. I'm going to eat that shit. I wouldn't I wouldn't give a fuck and I wouldn't say it as many times if I said if I didn't say it. If I didn't know the studio next door, then go up there every day. It was like, oh yeah, Disney, 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 ah, Disney, ah, Disney Plus. Ah. Yeah. Like, come on, dog. Like, I get it. We get it. We love Disney. I love Disney. I love Disney. Yeah, we all love Disney. But what's wrong with that? But damn it, man, we kind of only love Disney. <laughs> we're talking about an Amazon original, yeah, man. Yeah, I know, boys. I know, but it's the same shit. It's like we're talking about we're talking about superheroes again, man. We're talking about the same shit, and I just feel like the only thing that I I, I feel like I feel like the Disney Corporation really sucks out. No, I love Disney. I don't even want to say it like I think this. they're, but I think what it is is I think people are frustrated because they want something a little more. Like I think people who own who own you know if you only like Star Wars and you only like Marvel. All power to you. That's great. Salute. You know, I'm 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 with you. I'm 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 pro pro getting what you like. But I think people who want some some more like Charlie Kaufman. I think people who want a little more Tarantino. People who want a little more, you know, Ava DuVernay, uh, get a little frustrated because it's not it's not we're not getting we're not getting as much as that. As a I agree with you. I counter by saying those same people kind of raise their nose at me. Yeah. For 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 being like well these simpletons with yeah. their big blockbuster superhero movies yeah. when we all really know the real movies and I'm like bro like <laughs> y'all for real mm. I'm I'm okay last week I saw the farewell the farewell could be my favorite movie of the year and I yeah. could say Except I love this one. indie movie this yeah. is my movie yeah and at the same time I can cry in Endgame yeah and I can yeah. cry yeah. in Star Wars in the, oh, and buy the, all the damn t-shirts and go to yeah. D23 like yeah. bro it's not one or the other yeah you can like, do both for sure pe- people trip about like oh you gotta pick a side you gotta do this you gotta nah. it's the same thing with my Christian faith it's the same thing you gotta yeah. pick a side you gotta mm. bro 
chill, fam. I'm allowed to do what I want. Yeah. And someone came at me because I was tweeting about Latinos in movies, bro. Like, la- there is no Latinos in movies. Yeah, so like this, that, the, that article, that the report, if you read the whole damn report, the least represented group. Like, bro. And we watch more movies than any other ethnic minority in the U.S. and Canada. Like, this is real. And, and I'm allowed to be upset about this. And someone came at me like, oh, bro, what about the rest? What about Asian people? And I'm like, bro, I love Asian people. I, I, I'm allowed to do both. Mm-hmm. I'm allowed to be like, support the Asian people and go watch, you know, Crazy Rich Asians and yeah. The Farewell. You, and watch, you watch Wu's Assassin? No, I'm going to start watching yeah, that. That was but, pretty good. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not an either or, bro. And when it comes to the corporatization of movies, I'm allowed to speak up and say, hey, Let's get some more independent vendors in D23. Well, at the same time saying, I enjoyed the shit out of D23. Yeah. I loved it. It was yeah. fun. 100%. It was such a good environment. I saw yeah. all the princess dresses, and it was beautiful. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, you people, know what I'm people are going to compliment like quality. I think people are gonna co- always going to compliment quality. I think I get frustrated when I see people who you know for a fact behind the scenes did not like a movie, and then they'll go on the mic and say, oh, you know, it's it's... It was good, you know. I mean, it didn't have the best qualities ever, but it was, you know, it, it, it does something right. And it had that Disney magic. And just to me, it's like that little extra sauce. Because like, they're afraid. <laughs> People, it's yeah. because they're frightened. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good thing? That though, their or? credentials are going to be taken away yeah, because yeah. This, you, they said something bad about Disney. Which, by the way, at Disney, hey, Thank you for inviting me to so much shit that Jeff I do over the years. Cause I, I want to be more, invited more. Yeah. I want to be the face of Disney, bro. Put me on there. <laughs> I'll give me a mic. Nah, I'm, listen, I'm man. I'm going to be the, the Ryan Seacrest of Disney. If Disney's hiring, please, Disney. I'll take it. I'll take the application. But. I, I just feel like I, people have I this like black and white view of moviegoers, mm. of audience members. But I can watch something like The Boys and say, this is good. I like it. Well, at the same time, go and watch the MCU movies or go and... And oh, watch yeah, the Justice yeah, League yeah, movies yeah. Or, or something. I, mean, I, I honestly, just feel like not, the, the Boys isn't that much different sure, than the MCU. But, uh, that's right? a bad example. <laughs> My better example is what I said before. Right, the Farewell. The Farewell yeah. compared to Endgame, for example, or right, Star Wars. Right, right, right. I, I just feel like there is a such thing as moviegoers who only like those movies, and that's fine. Mm. But I, I feel like this, this, they're starting to become a little bit RB3, and I, I'm not accusing you of this. Of this elitism kind of thing, mm-hmm. where it's like oh, you call me an elite ace. Uh, <laughs> I watch, I watch movies by PTA, not the no, Captain no, America. No, 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 okay, right, right. Tarantino, and that I'm sounds, like, bro, that's... chill. I watch these <laughs> oh, movies sound, too. That may sound and like I still me. love Endgame. Uh, like, no. I watch both. No, okay, listen, that may sound People like, like both. Okay, that may sound like me, but okay, that may sound like me. It, but it you know, I could give you, I could give you literally any. Marvel theory, uh, 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 Spider Man theory. I could yeah. give you a whole pitch for the Fantastic Four. Sure. Like I could, like you know, I obviously sound like an elitist, but it's because I'm fucking tired, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing. I'm and tired. I'm with you. I want change too. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like raising our noses to superhero content isn't yeah. isn't the best thing we can do right now. I yeah. think we should celebrate, it. even if it's not the best, and if it's there's good, there's bad. Like something like the boys, man. There, there's yeah, it's good. It's good. Like yeah. overall, if you said one word, I'd say it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. good for sure. There's it's a good. lot of like whateverness in there. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of like bad not shit. necessary. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that didn't work for me, but for the most part, I enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's I, it's fun. I think, and this... I'm excited for season two, and we'll see what happens to Homelander. And I don't know why yeah. he didn't just snap Butcher's neck and. Toss it into the sun. <laughs> like, I'm curious, why did he keep yeah, Butcher alive? Fucking with him. He yeah, probably also probably, wants to yeah. see a superhero son. You know, superhero son he doesn't want to raise the shit, so leave Butcher to do it. Maybe. Uh, yeah. By the way, honestly, that might be even the worst revenge. Like leave it, leave yeah, it, leave it, leave it, leave it. That's more effed up than anything. Yeah, yeah. With, with another man's son, <laughs> the man who saved your life, bro. Nah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to hang himself off that. Uh, but what I will say though, you know, before I completely, you know, before we completely finish this up, yeah, um, I will say, like, even though, um, even though it may appear that you know, a lot of, even though, even though a lot of us do get frustrated, or even a lot of film Twitter gets frustrated by the remakes and the live action remakes and all that, uh, all that stuff. At the end of the day, uh, we all have childhoods, so I think, I think what, um, I think what comes down to why people have such differing and are so divided on a lot of these issues is because in their childhood they 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 learn they you know people yearn for a different type of cinema than once they're uh, adults you know um and you know same you know I 
I always say the same same thing. It's like a thirty year cycle. The fifties become the eighties, become the two thousand tens. The the sixties became the the or, I'm sorry, the nineteen thirties became the nineteen sixties, became the nineteen nineties. You know, which will become eventually like the uh, two you know twenty uh, twenties. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, so people are gonna so eventually cinema is always going to evolve and and and. No matter what time period of cinema we're in, there's always going to be the descending voice of like, oh, we're over it, oh, we're over it, oh, we're over it. But I think at the end of the day, uh, people will have will eventually see their trend, have their have its moment through uh, in cinema to some capacity. Um, and once that happens, then there's going to be another generation of people uh, putting their noses up to that too. So yeah, uh, I, I think this goes down to. You know, to finish off the conversation of the boys to the superhero genre in general, yeah, and 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 what's the the coming factor where it's like this is something that's so huge, and I, I think at the heart of it, RB three, what what made people like me, uh, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen year old me, when, whenever I started to get into this, mm. um, is the appreciation of the comic book as an art form, yeah, as a storytelling art form, <laughs> and I think that's why people latched on to the MCU and people latched on to the Dark Knight and mm. all these movies that created that made this genre the biggest genre ever, right. um, with Endgame being the biggest movie ever. And I think that's something that people shouldn't scoff at. You know, don't scoff at something that <sighs> is actually really interesting storytelling. Yeah. And a lot of it might be predictable, but there's a lot of it that's really good. And I yeah. think there's both sides of it. And, and wherever the superhero genre movie ends or ends or begins or starts again, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be there to see it too. But I, I don't feel like it's a... a, a a necessary thing to look down on yeah. is all I'm saying because I, I do think there's greatness in there. Yeah, there's bad shit in there too. Yeah, there's Ca- some Cap- bad movies. Captain America: Winter Soldier is a really great. It's a great movie. Non-conventional superhero movie. Yeah. And so if they go down the route of making a lot more of those. Yeah. I think people are gonna get so. Back to so personally, I feel stuff like Comic Con and stuff like superhero movie genre and stuff like that is good. Like we can enjoy this stuff. Stuff like The Boys. If people enjoy it, enjoy right. it, man. Tweet about it. Love it. You know, pick your favorite character, whatever it is. There, there, there's should be a conversation, and I agree with you. There mm. still should be more, and mm. there should be something else, right? And there should be more originality, mm. please. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we are we're begging for it, mm. but at the same time, I think something like this, we could be like, man, that was that was a blast. I had fun. Yeah, it was fun. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't a complete waste of eight hours. <laughs> But either way, I mean, shout out to Carl Urban. I feel like that guy is just yeah. Man. I, re- I rewatched Star Trek, like I said. I Star love Trek, him as Bones. Dread. He's also um, um, he great he at plays a uh, the the M sixteen guy from Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. forget his name. Yeah, he is jumping around in a lot of yeah. space. Somebody got man, cut this G- dude a check. Give this guy more money, man. I like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. Do the check. Um, isn't he, he, J- shout out to Jack Quaid too. Yeah, Jack Quaid is get, good. Get your um, Hollywood. Money and um, Billy Zane had a cameo in this movie. I thought it was oh, really that's great. That's right. And then on the show, I should say uh, salute to Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, and uh, shout out to all the movie. new actors that I didn't know. Like you. Yeah, there are a lot of good on. actors. This movie put on a lot. Of, or the show, I keep calling it the movie. The show put on a lot of good people. Yeah. Um, and I think more than anything, uh, salute to to Seth Rogen and uh, Evan Goldberg and Eric Kripke. Yeah. And shout Eric out Kripke, to him. Yeah. He hasn't made anything since Supernatural. This is the first thing he's made since then, I believe. Yeah. But but go watch Supernatural. Yeah. It's but such see, a freaking good show. Isn't that crazy though? All the network, all the people who did network shows are going to the streaming services and yeah. they have to do shows. Yeah, that's right. Be unchained. Yeah. Um, but man, Seth Rogen, man, he had the fucking Good Brother, Good Boys movie. And good Boys. This the well, what's up with the, the Long boys? Shot. Hey, hey, what are you trying to say, Seth Rogen? What's up with all this boy material, huh? Boys. Well, yeah, I mean, low key, that's that's just kind of. That's, uh, that's his, that's his marketing genre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get the boys. Yeah. In. I um, mean, if you see Future Man too, uh, shout out to Future Man. Go Future watch that show. But yeah, it's um, funny. yeah, this is good stuff, and um, a lot of good, a lot of good content out there. So yeah. I always appreciate. It. I've been, I've been back at home. Um, mm. you know, living in Compton with my, with my moms and grandmas. And uh, I've been getting them into Amazon and Netflix and all this yeah. shit. Yeah, and they're Give starting me more, to, man. They're starting to turn. They're starting to turn, man. Give me you more know? content. Yeah, you yeah. see that trailer for the new Netflix movie, The King? 
I didn't see that one. No. Oh, woo. That was good. I'm hype. Who's it? Who directed Timothy it? Chalamet, Rob Pattinson playing uh, Warring Kings. Uh, Hell yeah. Is who, did, Give me that know, shit. You know who directed it? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I can look it up, but yeah, stuff guess, like that. So. I'm like, bro, let's yeah. give, give it now, to me. Now, what I'm looking it. forward to is that Scorsese joint, The Irishman. <laughs> now, that's what I'm going to do. Who? I'm playing. Nah, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. is, man. Yeah. Either way, guys. Those are our thoughts on the boys. Give us your thoughts in the comments down below. Follow us on First Cut, the YouTube channel. We're yeah. there. You can find all our podcasts there. Follow us on Spotify, on iTunes. Leave us a nice comment on iTunes. Make sure you give us some love, guys, because we need all the love we can get. Yeah, and make sure you drop us a voice message. We are approaching an episode 100. Yeah, so on Anchor? Anchor? Yeah, on Anchor, yeah. So the link's in the description if you listen to the podcast and on YouTube, obviously. Um... Check out, yo, go to our anchor, leave a voice message. We want to play as many voice messages as possible on that episode. So there you go, guys. All right, you can follow me on Twitter at Squad Leader Race. Uh, follow me at Director RV3. And for the Mini Enough Podcast, we are peace and peace out. Guys.